Hey guys, um, yeah, sorry it's been a while since I said I was going to do an inbox review, and as I indicated, this was going to be first out of the gate actually. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not going to start building yet. Um, reason being is because, as you know, I'm in smaller accommodation that I'm living in now, and I just don't have the space or facilities to partake in the hobby at the moment. However, I have been building my stash up again, so for that reason, during this lockdown, I'll probably do the odd inbox review here and there, just to keep you guys entertained. Anyway, without further ado, this is going to be first out the gate, which, as you know, I had bought previously, some years ago, uh, but I never got around to building it, and I was going to do a Fury build, and that never happened. Uh, but I got it back again, I got another one back in again recently um, because I knew I was going to get this built either way and I uh, kept umming and ahhing, umming and ahhing and in the end I gave in and bought one um, they're not bad little kits actually, Italieri do do a good range of Sherman kits um, although some of the detail in it, like some of the surface texture such as the welding texture is not on there unfortunately it's very flat so there you go, but in a hot, as a whole, they do do a good range of Shermans. Um, if you don't want to put, you know, fork out for an Ahsoka one, um, as it were, because I mean, they are the best on the market, to be honest with you, with Ahsoka. So there you go. Um, anyway, let's get on with this, because I'm rambling. Um... I will build this as one of my projects as I'm going to get back to the hobby and I will be doing a Fury Sherman build um, but as I said I can't at the moment so let's get on with it as you can see uh, with the box art it's depicting the tank that was used in the film Fury uh, from the 6th Armoured Division um, or was it 66th Armoured 4th Armoured Division 66th I'm getting tongue tied now tank division um, which was based in Germany around about the early part of 1945 and as you can see here from the illustration it's just as though it's actually just after its main battle with the tiger which all of you can remember in the film um, and there's Brad Pitt on the top there and the commander's cupola's war daddy as you can see there um, there are three other versions you can do this in uh, but they're just the ordinary sort of Olive drab, as it were, with uh, again all vehicles which were based out in uh, Germany around about the early part of 1945, towards the end of the war. Um, so anyway, without further ado, we're going to get on with this. Um, the kit number, if you want to get hold of this, is six five two nine. Okay, so if you want to pause that, by all means, do so. Okay. Um, you, this one of the two colour callouts you can do, obviously you've got the Fury Sherman here, and this one is for the 14th um, Armoured Division, 25th Tank Battalion, Germany, early 1945. And as I say, kit number 6529, and you've got a box art on the side here, little bit of information on the back here about the ME, uh, the EZ-8, as it were and about four languages and the age of 14 plus and that's about it let's open up and then also you've got two types of track option uh, with this uh, with the rubber tracks t66 or t84e new glueable rubber so there you go and once you open the box up we've got one two Three, four sprues in two bags and then obviously you've got your two tracks which you can see here one set of decals and then you've got the wire for the antennae first off out of the bag what we do is the instruction sheet you've got a little bit of history about the vehicle here in six different languages which is English Italian uh, Danish French um, Spanish and Russian. So there you go. First open up, you got all your sprue trees, which you can see here, and the two different types of track, as well as some cotton wire for your antennae. 
And then obviously you've got your colour callouts, which is all referring to Italeri paints. Mind you, I've never used Italeri paints, so I've heard they're not bad. And then obviously you've got the symbols for drilling and cutting our holes, etc. Your symbols, and then first off, you've got the assembly of the lower hull with some of the suspension units and the running gear going on. And you've got your colour guide there for the wheels. And more suspension units going on the lower hull. And then it's the assembly of the HVSS uh, units which we used on this version. Uh, basically to make the tank go faster and obviously um, over more rougher terrain as it were. It was a lot smoother to ride than the standard uh, Shermans in the past. As you remember, I did do uh, attempt to do a uh, Fury Sherman build on the uh, Tamiya kit, which was a basically rebox on the Soka kit, um, and I was shortchanged on the HVSS, which stopped the assembly of the tank. On this one, I've got them all, so I won't have a problem with that. And I must admit, the assembly process looks a lot easier than the old Soka kit. Then you put your units on there along with the uh, gear housing for the front sprocket, as it were. Then it's referring to the, oh god, what was it, um, idler wheel at the back here. And the suspension units that go onto the back plate and then the back plate goes onto the lower hull. Next process is the attention to the upper hull and it's telling you here to cut off the two front mud flaps, as it were, which results in this. Okay, and then you sit, fit the MG machine gun onto the front glacis. Next up to that is to fit the exhaust housing there, which you can see. And then the assembly of putting the sprocket on and putting the tracks on. Now, I tend not to do this until near the end because it's going to make your painting a lot easier. Some modelers put the tracks on and then paint them on when they've got them on the gear vehicle. I don't. It just saves yourself a lot of heartache, to be honest with you. And to be honest, what I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to be using the rubber tracks on this. I'm going to get aftermarket. So there you go. But apparently these are glueable with cyanacrylate glue. So there you go. After you've done that, you put the front gear housing on, and there you are. Bob's your uncle. That's the first part of the assembly process done. Next up, um, obviously after you put the upper hole onto the lower hole, is the grab handles go onto the hatches for the driver and machine gunner's hatches, which go on there. Uh, front housing goes on there for, I don't know what that's for. Um, and then you've got your headlights and the light headlight covers which go on. Towing cable goes on there, and I don't know what this part is from bracket for the gear housing, I suppose. And then, so, I don't know, this is an optic which goes on as well. Maybe that's for the alternate version, I'm not quite sure. So you might have to check your references. And then your back rear light covers go on. Grab handles, tools, etc. And head back headlights go on. And there's a colour guide to that as well, which you can see there. Okay. Um, lower brackets go on to the lower part of the hole. Um, replacement mud guards go on. And then obviously you've got the uh, housings in for where the logs are going to fit. So, yeah. Front part of the loading for any ammunition, etc., goes on is assembled and put on the front, as well as the oh, well, that's it, the assembly of it actually, the rear rack, which goes on the back of the vehicle by the engine cover. And obviously, you've got all the tools that go on there, rib mud flaps go on, etc. And then it's the building of the actual turret itself. Uh, you've got the main barrel there. Um, I've forgotten the millimetre on that, I'll have to look into that in a minute. But that was actually any, um, an improved barrel over the normal 76mm and it actually had a far more hitting power uh, when it came up against Tigers or Panthers etc. I think that was a principal idea. 
Then the, the mantlet is assembled and then barrel and the mantlet go onto the main turret along with the um, muffler cover, I think. Uh, so there you go, and obviously you've got the assembly of the turret itself. Then all the lumps and bumps go on, the grab handles, etc. As you can see there, and there, and there. Um, and then obviously it's a case of putting the hatches on and the commander's cupola and then adding the stowage either side, which you can see here. Then the fitting of the MG51 and the other machine gun as well, because this one with the Fury version had two and a lot of them only had the MG51. Um, so there you go. That's that part. And... Next up after that is the assembly of all the fuel tanks, etc., the buckets, and all the um, ammunition boxes, etc., which all go, all the storage goes on the back, again, added to the actual the upper hole. Brackets go on the side there for the logs, which go on as well, which was depicted in the film. And all more lumps and bumps will go on there and storage etc go on to the upper hole and then it's final parts of spare helmets etc. Aerials which go on the back and the next bit up is fitting the turret to the main hull and putting the tow cable on. One more little fitment is obviously the familiar German helmet and gas mask which goes on the front of the vehicle if you're doing the Fury version. And then obviously you've got the colour call outs for, hang on, how many versions is it? One, two, I think there's three. First off you've got the Fury show with all the storage and everything on it as depicted in the film. And <clears throat> the second option is one actual M uh, Easy 8 which is from the 14th Armour Division, 25th Tank Battalion uh, Germany early 1945 okay and then you've got another version which is of the 4th Armour Division 37th get my teeth back in 37th Tank Battalion Germany early 1945 basically they're all around the same sort of period and down here if you lose any parts you got your spare part thing in here and get it off the post to Italy so there you go right let's have a look at the main crux of the matter uh, which is the kit itself. First off, you've got your cotton wires there for the aerials. So there you go. I'll probably use normal wire, to be honest. The decals, hmm, not bad. Quite nice and matte. Probably go down pretty well, so I don't think we'll have any problems with that. First set of tracks, which is for your Fury Sherman. Not a bad level of detail. Um, and apparently these fit with cyanacrylate glue and like most rubber tracks again Nice level of detail although as I say, I won't be using these. I'll be using maybe frills I expect And then there's your second standard sort of set of tracks for an easy eight Which you got there for the other three versions Again good level and basis of detail. So there you go. Right, first brew. Now I have got my scissors with me, unlike the first take, so I'm going to open them up, open the bags up, and we'll have a look at some of the running gear, etc. Let's have a little look. And you've got two sets of these, so I'm only going to take one set out. Oh god, nearly lost the part then. And as you can see here, Wheels are nicely cast, nice level of detail, not one ounce of flash. And again, you've got some of the parts of the suspension units on the back here. Actually, turn it around the other way, you can get better than I look at it. There's your running wheels, brackets for the side, HVSS suspension units, nicely detailed as you can see there. And again, you've got some of your storage here, more parts of the suspension units, and HVSS units here. And again, these will come up nice with a wash on these wheels, I must admit. And then you've got the idler wheel here. Storage, nicely done. 
although you can get resin aftermarket set for the Fury Sherman. I don't know if it's still being produced, but you could at the time this kit came out. As you can see, you got all the authentic stowage and oil cans, ammunition racks, which I have to say <coughs> aren't bad. Your bucket, which you got here, and the handle, helmets, which all go around the side of the turret. Your logs here, which are nicely cast, as you can see there. Nice level of detail there. And there's your oil cans. Again, I like the way they've actually got the dents in it as well. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the dents in the oil cans. Very nicely caught. <coughs> nice touch. Spare track units, which you can see here as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a dry throat. Uh, so yeah, nice detail on that. Not bad for Italy kits. There's normally some some of them usually lack a little bit of detail, but this one's quite nice. As I say, they do do a good run of Shermans. Now I'm going to try and get some parts of the turret out. Ah, here we go. There you go. There's your turret. The only thing that's disappointing is there is. No casting texture texture on this kit. Uh, although I do like the fact they've put the weld number on it. So that's a nice touch. The only thing I would suggest with if you want to recreate the weld texture on the actual turret is use Mr. Surfacer uh, 1000. And that's what I would suggest. Again with the hatches you've got a nice level of detail. Especially with the springs here I must admit. That's very nicely caught. Grab handles as you can see there. That's your mud flaps at the front. Commander's cupola, which has got a nice level of detail again. Oops, went a little bit out of focus there. There you go. Very nicely caught. Oops, it's going out of service. And then there's the lower part of the turret. MG50 um, machine guns nicely caught and then you've got the MG51 there uh, it's a little bit bowed and bent but I'm sure in that bit of hot water I soon sort that out <coughs> and then you've got the handle for the MG51 there there's your two piece barrel although you could probably hunt out an aftermarket metal barrel if you should so wish and then obviously you've got the um, covering for, for the actual turret, which you can see here. Again, there's some nice texture here, which you could probably recreate with some washes. And there's your mantlet. Not bad. Again, you might need to put some Mr. Surfacer, but again, they've got some weld uh, numbers on it, which is nicely caught. So there you go. All right, let's put that back in its bag. So I don't lose it. Pop that back in the box, and then we'll open up this second bag of screws. Let's have a look again. This is the upper hole. Um, nice world seams on it, I like that. Uh, but again, there's no sort of casting texture on it, uh, but I don't think there was on the lower hole anyway. Uh, but with these, apparently, you've got to cut the mud, fl mud flaps off and use the replacement ones because they're slightly wider and more accurate. Again, you've got another MG51 there. Why they've got that there, I don't know. Tools, again, as you can see here, you've got the rear exhaust diffuser. Nice detail on that. That's your rear plate. And then, obviously, you've got your gear housing, which is there. A uh, nice little uh, Thompson machine gun there. Grab handles, a uh, searchlight, and this is the rear plate for whichever version you do because obviously you've got the two. So you'll have to do your research again, guys. And other various lumps of ones. So you've got the light eyed covers there, um, ends of the machine gun racks. Uh, so yeah, looking really, really nice, guys. And obviously, you've got the oil cans there, as you can see. Uh, more stowage. That will come up nice with a wash. And then you've got the driver's hatches and obviously loader's hatch. Well, machine gun loader's hatch. And then the uh, mount for the gun when it's stowed away. 
So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. There you go. Uh, okay. So that's that. And then finally, I'm not going to take it out of its bag as the lower hole. You know, I'm just trying to get this one back in its bag as well. And it doesn't get damaged and parts don't get lost. So I'll pop them back in the bag. <coughs> Excuse me. And this finally is your lower hole. And you've got the escape hatches in. If you remember in the film, um, the young guy actually gets out the front hatch and ends up hiding under the tank all night <coughs> until German troops have gone. So, yeah, not bad at all. So, all in all, um, if you're on a budget, this is not a bad kit to go for. Although there are other easy eights out there, to me, I do a couple, one from World War Two, and also... Uh, so I could do a quite a range of Shermans as well as an easy eight, and I think also Ming and Tacom have got a few. <coughs> but if you're on a budget and you want to go for a cheapie, I would suggest this one. Although you will have to do some uh, casting texture with Mr. Service, so, but there you go. But all in all, in all, it looks like quite a nice, easy little build. So there you go. That's Italeri's M4A3 E8 Sherman Fury. And um, I hope you enjoy the inbox review. Um, I will probably build this at some time in the future. Uh, but obviously it will be in a different house, obviously when my situation has improved. Um, I've got more inbox reviews coming up as the days go by and I shall post them as well. In the meantime, get kit crazy. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. And uh, take care out there. Okay. Speak to you soon. Cheers.